Hello and welcome to the SEO podcast with me, Andy Kinsey. Today, we're going to be talking about Google's new designation as a gatekeeper in the EU and what that means for them. We're also going to be talking about how Google, or Google Bot, I should say, handles AI content and whether you should still be using Google Sites, given Google has confirmed they're not ideal for SEO. So, as I say, I'm Andy Kinsey. I am the founder of SEOandy.com. I've been in SEO for 17 years. If you need any SEO help, jump on to seoandy.com, give me a shout. So let's start with that news that Google has been designated a gatekeeper under the new DMA Act, DMA standing for the Digital Markets Act. And what it means is companies such as Google slash Alphabet and Microsoft and Meta and Apple must give more choices to users but also must give them more control. It means that those companies are part of, I think there's 22 of them, must enable the increase in competition whilst the DMA Act itself limits the power of those big tech companies by ensuring that competition happens but also downgrading their own power on their own platforms, in essence. So for Google, just as an example, this would mean in search, they're not allowed to promote their own products directly in organic search. So, for example, Gmail and Google Docs wouldn't be allowed to be artificially promoted in organic search. So if you searched email, it wouldn't be allowed to be biased in search algorithms to put it at the top of search so we would hopefully from the start of next year i think this comes in in march next year officially they've got six months to implement this we would start to see the likes of outlook and other email providers at the top of that list there is a bit of a question around advertising here because one of the clear things as we'll get to the objectives you'll see this one of the clear things is they could still advertise now there's more to come out around the dma act that i've not yet read but it sounds like they may be able to use advertising as a way around this mechanism and it will be interesting to see whether they're not allowed to bias advertising and whether they've got to have the transparency of a them bidding for their own their own space in advertising so whilst they can block out the algorithm the organic algorithm can they skew paid advertising would be a question i've still got that makes sense so who are some of these companies well as i say there's apple amazon meta microsoft there's tiktok X is covered by this, formerly Twitter. There's 22 of these companies. And in reality, this is a rebalancing act by the EU. And I believe we're going to see very similar um, legislation in the US, if we not already, because there is trust legislation in the US. It's likely to be an update there. Uh, this in reality is an update to previous legislation because this goes in line with updates around GDPR um, as you'll hear in a second um, around consent for advertising and the four objectives for the DMA are giving more giving people more choice over default apps so on your phone if you wanted to change it, when it loads up, Gmail isn't the default, Apple Mail isn't the default, you've got a choice, which I think will be interesting, but I think in reality most people, if they choose Android, would Gmail. Allowing alternative app stores. I think in reality it will be more than six months down the line before that one happens, but I 
think it'll happen. It's a bit like Apple saying okay eventually to the USB-C charger. I think it will happen. Forcing messaging in apps to interoperate. Now this is an interesting one. I think this is just referring to SMS messages and I think it will happen. I think we will finally see the end of emojis being charged with this text message between Android and iPhones because being charged however much from one to the other for an emoji blows my mind because it's the same emoji and I think we will see a standardization of those emojis. What I'm not sure this is heading at is the likes of WhatsApp interacting with SMS or anything like that because I don't think that will work and it requires an entirely new stack of technology that just doesn't exist right now. Um, I think it could work, but I think there's a bit of a weird thing going on there. I think it's just weirdly worded. A ban on preferential treatment of company services in rankings. And this is what I talked about at the start. Google, for instance, not being allowed to say my service is best in organic search. Same for Microsoft on Bing, not being able to say Hotmail or Outlook is much better or Office 365 is much better. We should see that kind of thing disappear. But this next statement is interesting. So companies will need consent for targeted advertising and business customers will get more transparency and ad data. Well, this goes in line with the CMP update. So are we saying that Google could advertise Gmail at the top? And if so, are they still allowed to say Outlook isn't allowed to advertise? Who knows? So in terms of advertising just carrying on that point being gatekeepers they've got to get that explicit permission in cmp updated every site's kind of got to get that if you've got advertising google ads or oh, adsense is already forcing people to do that if you've got ad manager it's forcing you to do that already if you've got large amounts of advertising or you run advertising you'll already be doing it if you're not and you've got adsense on your website Go into AdSense right now, pause this video, go and read the notification. It'll help you to update it if you're just running AdSense and it'll put a CMP on your website that's compliant. If you've got multiple kinds of ads, so AdSense, Mediavine, etc., you need to figure out a way of doing this. And there are multiple platforms that allow you to do it. Um, I think you can do it all through AdSense in reality using the ad manager it has a CMP built into it which is free however there are other better in my view CMPs out there if you need any help get in touch at seoandy.com I'm here to help I can point you in the right direction if I can't help I know plenty of programmatic people who can help with this kind of thing app stores we've talked about android and iphones the interesting question here for me is whether they start to interoperate in some manner i doubt it very much however what we could see is finally pixel allowing samsung which would be an interesting way of doing things the question for me is whether the apps that you see in the Samsung app have to be from a developer who's certified on Google. That would be an interesting way of doing it. And there's no reason that couldn't happen because the DMA doesn't say you can have an app store but with no apps or with certain security procedures. It just says more app stores. And it's the same with Apple. So it could have the Apple App Store, but actually you could have 
you say, the Google App Store for Apple Apps, but you've got to be a registered Apple provider. And in doing so, Google gets its cut and Apple gets a cut because in reality, you're running both for the most apps. And so it's a win-win. And I could see at some stage that happening and there being a single platform from one or the other, or both, where you've pushed to one or the other because you've registered and you've then got a set price. It makes life much easier to do that kind of thing. Default apps we've kind of talked about, and we first saw this with web browsers. Actually, Microsoft was forced to say, do you want Chrome, do you want Firefox? Because Internet Explorer was just too big. And actually, um, I seem to recall, I don't know if you still do, because I ignored it, you get used to it. Um, Chrome asking, and Internet Explorer asking, what do you want your default search engine to be? I've just ignored it for life. And you've then got other people who I'm not yet sure how this is going to work with, but Amazon and Facebook, I'm not really sure how this affects them, but I'm pretty sure for Amazon it's going to mean they can up their own Amazon Basics in search. Unless, of course, again, it's to do with sponsored, which is just a paid advert. So this is all a bit here, there and everywhere. Now, as I say, they've got six months to comply with this. Technically rolls out March of 24. I think we're going to see similar legislation around the world. So everyone's going to fall into this in some way. I think the reality is it's about time. There you go. If you've got any comments on how this should be implemented, or if you know how the advertising side of it is going to be implemented for Google and Microsoft and Amazon, let me know in the comments. I'd really like to know. Or if you've got a link to that section of the DMA work, because as I've read through it, I clearly missed a bit. I'd be really grateful. On to our next subject. How Google works with AI content. Now, this is a question that I didn't particularly have because I kind of weirdly knew how it worked. Because if you think about it from an SEO point of view, it's quite simple. But if you think about this from, say, a content writer's point of view, you might think it actually is AI content or AI generated content any different and does Google look at it in a different way does it go down so if there's content A that you've written yourself is AI content over here somewhere does it go down a different path and the answer in my mind has always been no and in a recent Q&A Google confirmed it, the answer was no. So what happens is Google goes to your site, it gets a crawl of your site, and as it comes to indexing, it does its pre-render as normal. And this is where things get interesting, it'll split off. So what it does is it looks and says, is there any content on the site? And if there's no content, it'll then make a judgment call to say, is there usually content here? And if there's usually content, it'll go into rendering. And this channel here is already going into rendering because it's seen content. And then they join back up. If there's no content it, and it, there isn't usually content, it'll just check it out. So you're now back on this linear path. And if it's going to render, it'll either do it through JavaScript or it'll do your text content. Your HTML, if you will. And what it's doing at this point is going to look for the quality of your content and everything around it. So it's making a judgment call and saying, actually, is this the standard across the website? Is this better than what's on the website? Which is neither here nor there for most websites. 
um, especially the large websites. But if you've got a small website, a small business website, and you're suddenly writing content that is the most beautiful content in the world, there'll be a question about where it's come from. But if you're writing really steady, really okay content, and suddenly it takes a downturn or it's in broken English, it'll get a quality mark against it. And this is what basically Google in this Q&A was saying. It goes down the same track because the quality assessment is the same. Google will pick up crappy content, whether it's AI or whether it's normal content. And it'll be marked against you in the same way. There's no need for it to go down a separate track because they would have to render your content to understand whether it's good content, bad content. So it just goes down that normal track, the normal ranking track, the normal understanding your content track to see if it's relevant to your website, to see if it's relevant to your niche and to see how generally good it is. And if there's any question over it, question over its legitimacy, if you will, whether actually it's plagiarized, whether it should be marked as something else, it goes to a human assessor. It goes through the normal assessment of a piece of content. And Google says, this is perfectly normal. There is no AI detection here. It's just looking to see the quality of the content. Is it low quality? Is it good quality? Is it amazing quality? Because actually it's compared to yourself, it's compared to those in your niche, and it's compared to everyone else. And that's how basically you get a magical score that no one knows because it's in a silo. And then that's compared to a million ranking terms. And that's how you get ranked for a given term. So the short answer is Google doesn't do anything with AI. Oops. Our final topic for the day. What are Google Sites doing? Should you still be on them? And doom, 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 the answer is no. Sorry about that. I hold my hands up. I don't advise anyone to use Google Sites. And honestly, unless you are a real beginner building your business, I advise you to get off Google Sites. You will struggle to get any decent metrics out of it and you'll probably struggle to rank. Now I'm sure there are sites out there that rank quite well, but if you've got a couple of quid a month to put on hosting and build a WordPress website, even a really basic one with a free theme, it's gonna do infinitely better in my view than a Google site. And I don't know many people that would disagree with me on that. But why was Google Sites being addressed in a recent Google Q&A? And it's because there's been some concerns over pages not being indexed, but also because of the way tracking seems to be working or the lack of in reality. So there was a question that was submitted and when you look on Twitter, there's quite a few of these similar kind of questions of basically Google sites where users in particular without a custom domain on them couldn't see the correct information on Google search console or it was missing data. And it was a similar story when it came to Google Analytics. And this is a free setup you get so abc.googlesites.com or a similar domain and the data was just partially missing or missing entirely for some people and the reality is is what do you expect for free in my view and i'm not saying that to be mean i'm just saying well in reality if you've got say a hundred thousand users and you're using 
or a million users and you're using Google's free analytics, it kind of samples your data. It's not going to give you the full readout of your data. It's going to give you your trend of data. It'll give you 50, 60% of your data. And that's if you're lucky, even on the new GA4, it's unlikely to give you all your data in all the locations. So you've got to be kind of careful on that. But for this case, what was actually happening is because there was no custom domain there, which can cost you, what, 10 quid a year? It wasn't transiting data fully. But there's also, it reading between the lines here, an issue transiting data because the front end URLs are different to the back end URLs that you see as a user. So if you're an admin, you see different URLs to what a front end user sees, which means actually the analytics isn't likely to match up entirely. But also, in my view, Google sites just don't rank well. Partly the code base, but also because people think they get authority and trust from it being a Google site, which is why they've left it as a Google site's domain, but that's not true in reality. Part of that is because they're used for spam sites. So the subdomain googlesites.com or whatever it now is, is actually used by thousands and thousands of spam sites that kind of are used to build networks and the subdomain or domain has just been downgraded and downgraded. That alone is a reason to just not live on that domain. And even if you've got your own custom domain, I'd get off it because it's still referred to in the code. The reality is, is part of the question was, can it be indexed? And the answer is strictly yes, but it's kind of tricky because of the way it's coded. So if you're building a website for a new business, unless you really don't have money, then find a host like Cloud Above, like I use, who will, for just a couple of quid a month, give you hosting. They will install WordPress for you automatically. You don't have to touch it. And if you pay for it annually, you'll get a free domain. Oh, I've just remembered. And if you use code SEOMD in all capitals as a referrer, you'll get a few quid off as well. Enough to give you free hosting for your first month. So yeah, do that. This wasn't an affiliate link, by the way. It's just because I've used them for 14 years now. They are amazing. So that's cloudabove.com. So that's it for today. You can find the SEO podcast at seomandy.com. You can also find my agency at seomandy.com. I've been Andy Kinsey. See you soon.